2024. Mein Name ist Matze Busse und der charmante Herr zu meiner Rechten hört auf den Namen David Hoffmann. Nach der Goodie Runde haben wir den nächsten, den zweiten Bodybuilding Talk mit unserem heutigen Stargast. Also lohnt sich auf jeden Fall zu bleiben. Unser Gast hört auf den Namen Wesley Wissers und kommt aus unserem Nachbarland, den Niederlanden. Und hat gerade ganz frisch unter anderem die Arnold Classic in Columbus und in Birmingham United Kingdom gewonnen. Genau, also somit ähm, erwiesenermaßen einer der besten Classic Physikathleten auf dem Planeten. Ich glaube, dann holen wir ihn auch direkt auf die Bühne ja. und starten. Unter tosendem Applaus hoffentlich von euch begrüßen wir auf der Bühne unseren zweifachen Arnold Classic Champion Wesley Wizards. <laughs> hey. Welcome. What's up? So we have a seat. Good to see you guys. Thank you for coming. All right. So first of all, Wesley, before we start talking about the Arno Classic, the upcoming Olympia, do you remember your first FIBO in Germany? Yes, I did. I was 17 years old, which is already 13 years ago right now. And uh, I've been going here for uh, yeah, 13 years now. But today, well, actually yesterday was the first time I actually saw the city. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've never been, before? No, never before. We just drove straight to the expo, only saw the inside of the expo, but never actually visited the city itself. So did some sightseeing, so it was nice. But also incredible to see how incredibly busy it is right now. So it's an amazing experience. And you came as a competitor already, or you were just like a visitor and having fun in the gym? always a visitor pretty much always a visitor only yeah this year is the only time i've really come here as a as not just a visitor but also someone on stage right now wesley the last time i saw you a few weeks ago in birmingham after uh, winning a show and uh, today you look so much bigger tell us about the last few weeks and about your weight how much weight did you gain after the competition but All you still right. look great but yeah so i've never seen you this big Yeah, so of course, now that we won the Arnold Classic twice, we have something more to prove. There's one more competition left, which is the Mr. Olympia. That's right, actually, it's only one more title left for you now. Yes, it still sounds and feels unbelievable to me that I've made such a big jump. But uh, it's the truth, it's the reality. Only the Olympia title is left for me to win as the top title in the world to be achieved. So, of course, uh, me and my coach are taking this time very seriously and taking the rebound gain seriously because this is the first time in a few years I've been able to have a true off-season, kind of a, a balking season, to really push my weight up until uh, the maximum it can go before hitting the weight plateau that I have. So we have a few months to prepare for the Olympia and we're doing everything in our power to make it happen, to make uh, the best possible shape be shown on that stage. So what does that mean in kilos? What was your weight on stage and what is your um, weight now? On stage, it, it was around 111, something like this in kilos. And right now I'm 10 kilos heavier. 10 so, kilos? Yes, yes. So, but it's all on purpose. You, it's yeah. not that you started binge eating after the competition. No, no, I actually, um, normally I stay very lean after a show because there's another show coming very soon. For example, after the, um, after the Olympia, I did Romania. And after Romania, then there was the Honor Classic, but there was not really that much room to, to push. And now, um, you know, I'm still pretty lean. I am bigger, but we keep the leanness um, in great shape. Um, but we still push the weight to improve strength in the gym, to truly recover from the competitions, because I've been competing since uh, the European Pro uh, last year in September. So it's been a very long prep. So you also got to take seriously this time off now to truly, uh, you know, repair the body, make sure you take the rebound seriously and then go with full energy into the Olympia. Wesley, you're now on, on top of the career as a two-time Arnold Classic champion, but when did you start competing and how did your career as an amateur? Yeah, I started in 2013. So yeah, I've been competing for 11 years now and uh, I uh, was a junior athlete, 20 years old. And I was, I was already training for like six or seven years or uh, six or seven years in the gym before doing my first competition. 
And honestly, I always thought you had to be someone like Ronnie Coleman or Jay Cutler to be able to do bodybuilding competitions. But I did not realize that there were amateur competitions as well. So that's when I saw a poster in a local gym of the guys competing at a local competition. And I was like, wait, wait a minute, maybe I can compete with these guys. And that's when I won my first competition as a junior. And I won a lot of competitions afterwards as well, because you keep getting motivated. If you win the first one, you of course want to keep that uh, going. So I was very motivated to keep going. And within two years, I was already uh, the top amateur in the Netherlands as a junior. So yeah, I had to wait until Classic Physique basically came around to be able to do that class, which was in 2018. But as a pro, you had now, I mean, in your career as a professional athlete, you had ups and downs. You were always in the, in the spotlight, but now you won the Arnolds. You are uh, working with Stefan Gietz together, who will have, by the way, tomorrow at 2.30 also on stage. Um, what did you guys change during the last two years that, that you have now such a big su uh, success and improvement? Yeah, so I started working with uh, Stefan in 2021. I uh, won the Poland Pro, and then I was qualified for the Olympia. And I coached myself, but I noticed that I was digging too deep for myself. I was too strict. So I needed a coach to tell me to back off sometimes or to make the right decisions and not to be too strict on yourself. And that's where Stefan came in, where we made a lot of gains, especially in the off season, where normally I would take a competition very seriously in terms of perfect progression. But in the off season, sometimes you slack off a little bit because you don't have anyone to, you know, to be accountable for. But then was Stefan, and uh, I had to send uh, my uh, shape pictures every single week to, you know, first of all, show improvements, to show my leg routines. He was critiquing my leg workouts, my range of motion, stuff like this, to be able to improve upon my weak points. So, you know, month after month, year after year, we started to nail, okay, this is the protocol for nutrition. This is the protocol for training that works for me. And bodybuilding takes time. So we couldn't really achieve the best shape in the first year. But in the second year, I went from 11th place to 8th place and then to 7th place at the Olympia, all because we got to know each other better and better. So now we're really locked in and at the R Classic, we figured out exactly how to do everything correctly. Also the peak uh, towards the R Classic competition. So now we know exactly what to do to be at our very best at the Olympia. So at, at what point in your career did you realize that you might have a chance to become the best in, in the world? Um, well, honestly, in 2018, I turned the first, I was the first pro in Europe as a classic physique athlete. And I got a lot of hype behind me. I then won the Chicago Pro uh, as a, uh, by pro debut, I won it as well. So from going to a Dutch amateur to a qualified Olympia athlete within one year, we, we as a family and friends, we started to believe, wait a second, maybe we can actually do this. But then the Olympia came and I was shared 14th place. Because that's when I realized, well, the Olympia, that's the best of the best in the world. There's nobody that, that was, better. By the way, that was the last time I was able to beat you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I did learn, wait a second, it's not just about the, the shape. It's not just about the physique itself, but also about the conditioning, the presentation. And those two things I didn't really nail down that much because I was 24, 25 um, then. And I did not have much experience on a pro stage at all. So I thought as a classic athlete, you could you know, not be as conditioned because in the 70s, they weren't conditioned either. But I realized quickly, everybody at Olympia is super conditioned. So I have to nail that as well. And it took me a while to truly show conditioning that also showcased my fullness at the same time. Because one year you go down too deep, you're, you're I'm tall, so then you're very flat. The next year you, oh, you overspill. And then the year after, I, I nailed it perfectly. So yeah. From the first year, I did think, okay, maybe we can do this, but then very soon I realized it's much more difficult than, uh, than you think. In my opinion, we've seen the best Wesley ever on stage in, in Columbus, and now you have around about six more months. What do you think is possible what, possible what you can bring on stage at the Olympia? Yeah, so you mentioned you saw the best version of me at the R Classic Ohio, and if you see the preparation I had for that, it was only really six to maybe nine weeks of maintenance slash growth from the Romania Pro I won uh, in November. So there wasn't really a lot of room to grow, yet I did show a better physique. So just imagine what can happen when you actually have a longer time to fully rest, recover, be healthy and then grow, and then take also a longer prep to go truly into that conditioning that they want to see at the Olympia. 
I think a lot can happen. I mentioned before the R Classic that it's going to be an interesting show, and with that I meant I'm not just going to show up, but I'm actually going to battle with Ramon Dino, which, which is what I did. And I think I can say the same thing about this Olympia, that it will be a true battle with me and Chris Bumstead. Not just, oh, Chris is going to win, and who's going to go second? No, it's going to be a true battle, and I'm going to make sure that's going to happen. So you think you can beat, you can beat Chris, in his, uh, Chris Bumstead in his, uh, yes, even yes. In his best, best shape? I, I think so. I think now the possibilities are wide open. I proved to myself and also the judges at the Arnold Classic Ohio especially that um, you know, even if you don't have that super narrow waist or the classical you know, aesthetic physique that they want to sometimes want to see or think that's the true classic physique, even with an old school physique like I do, like Arnold uh, used to have, you can still overcome a lot because right now, um, you know, if you look at the scores, I beat the number two in the world. So that means that even with a physique like myself, you can do a lot more than people might initially think. And I'm going to improve upon what I showed at the R Classic Ohio, you know, fill in the weak points, be even more conditioned, polish the presentation even more. And I think then that's going to be very hard uh, for even a Chris Bumstead to, uh, to challenge that. So you've got to go into the competition believing that you will be the victor. How did your life change after winning those uh important titles yeah it's uh well first of all it was a childhood dream to meet arnold schwarzenegger himself so i've now met him twice on stage and multiple times around as well but twice he gave me compliments about my physique about my posing so that gives you so much boost towards you know the title that everybody wants the olympia title but it really did change my life because you know even though social media some people might not like it but the truth is, it's very important in this sport. To so actually, how many followers did you gain? Yeah, I wanted to say that it's more than double now. Double? So it took me like six or seven years to build up to a certain point, and then it took me twi two weeks to double that. So that just goes to show how incredible that boost was that the R Classic gave me. And uh, yeah, there was, especially I live in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, bodybuilding isn't a super big sport, but even still, a lot of local media called me up, like newspapers, like TV shows, uh, radio stations, they all wanted me to do interviews and to show what bodybuilding is about. Of course, Arnold helped a little bit, you know, having an Arnold title, but still, uh, it changed my life because a lot of people in the Netherlands now, even though they are not a bodybuilding fan, they still know who I am. So it's, it's a truly uh, life-changing event, and uh, this might just be the start. You say you're now the number one bodybuilder from the Netherlands, like there's William and uh, they, they, they used to be um, Barry de May back yes. in the 80s. Yeah, but who yeah. else? Barry de May, he always said, uh, I hope you do it as good as you can at the Olympia, except not higher than number three, <laughs> because he holds the record at the Olympia number, uh, being number three. Um, but I do intend to be that for sure. And uh, of course, William Bonac, much respected athlete, but he's a very different athlete compared to myself. He also won multiple oral classics. Uh, and right now he's also being coached by my coach. So we, who, who knows who's, gonna, who's, who's that gonna change in the future for him and uh, what is it that that's gonna bring. But for right now, yeah, I mean, I won the oral classic. So at the moment I would say that I'm the best in the Netherlands, yes. But would you say that also the people in the Netherlands, it's easier to stay from, for the mainstream people to understand classic physique compared to open bodybuilding? Yes, because um, I often have to explain like uh, the differences between the open class and classic physique, but only because they think, oh, uh, do you want to even be bigger or is it, nor is it healthy to be even bigger than this? And I'm like, well, classic physique has actually been created with a weight cap to protect the physiques from getting too big aka not being as aesthetic because you know arguably especially a few years ago the bigger you got the less aesthetic your physique might also grow to be so classic physique protects that with a weight cap and then i'm also like well classic physique the, the name says it it refers to the past and then i mentioned arnold schwarzenegger and uh, the people from the past who have those aesthetic classic physiques from the golden era and then they all of a sudden understand all the terminator movies like sylvester stallone all of those kinds of physiques that's more like classic physique and then you've got the open guys who you know who basically have to be as big as they possibly can in order uh, to win so in classic physique it's more relatable basically to the everyday person that's right as a reigning champion the the attention the publicity 
is the for yourself is it a higher pressure or, or how does, does this change um, no it's not, it's not a higher pressure I've um, the, the nice thing is I've been doing this for so many years and so many people have always believed in me even when I didn't win that it doesn't feel that much different in terms of pressure it's like oh finally I can now show what I'm about to a greater audience so for example uh, this morning I had a photo booth moment and there were so many people in line and I've always wondered how do those other guys get such a big line? And uh, back then I didn't used to get those, but now I'm happy that I'm actually able to inspire more people and it gives me a privilege to be able to do so. And uh, the only pressure part about it is that you now have sometimes have to disappoint people in having to turn them down, for example, at a competition where you gotta go to your next thing to do and a lot of people still wanna talk to you or take pictures, that's the only downside of it that you got to say i'm sorry uh yeah sorry that you have to wait but i gotta go now so that's the only part but the rest is just a privilege for me um not that i want to talk you into ending your career but have you ever made like a plan did you say i compete till i win the olympia or i will compete till i'm 40 because you have also have business you have children so is there a plan you want to go into acting maybe you have a great accent, great voice. <laughs> yes, I might want to go into voice acting for sure. But, uh, <laughs> you know, in terms of age, I was always thinking about 35. But with uh, the caveat that if I don't achieve what I have set to achieve by the time I turn 35, then I might not do professional bodybuilding anymore. Because, you know, if you're 35 and you've already been doing shows for 15 years by then, I mean, are you really going to change something by then? And of course, thinking about your children, thinking about your health as well. But when the Arnold Classic has changed a lot, of course, it opens a lot of new doors. And um, I think the Olympia is a true possibility now. And of course, winning it once is always an incredible dream. But then there's a question, do you just win it once or multiple times in a row? So it really depends on what's going to happen and how healthy you remain. But I. I feel great, I feel healthy, I'm able to truly make a great living out of this, I provide for my children and my family, so it's, it's just a great blessing to be able to do this. And uh, I think there's still many more years ahead for sure. I feel great, so that's not going to be an issue. Do you already have a plan for the time after the Olympia this year? For example, if you will win the Olympia, would you still go on and compete, for example, in Prague at the EVLS show or anything like that? Well, I think now the Arnold Classic will always have a special place in my heart. So, of course, things can always change after you win the Olympia, because after I won the Arnold Classic, I was actually going to do more shows, except for the Olympia, you know, besides the Olympia, but a lot of people gave me the recommendation, focus on the Olympia now, this is your chance. So then I had to not do some shows that I intended to do. So you gotta also think what is the smart thing to do here, and uh, focus on the biggest game. So the Olympia, of course, is always a show you're going to do, but then the Arnold Classic is also a show that I'm, you know, it truly is a special place for me, especially uh, the Ohio Arnold Classic. So those two I will always do, and uh, depending on what's gonna happen, there might be more shows added to that, but it really depends on, on you know, the placings and how things will, will go. I mean, you have... Does Dexter, your son, does he understand what happened when Daddy was away in uh, America and in Birmingham and when you came back like, hey, I'm the Arnold Classic champion? <laughs> no, he's just, he's just three and a half years old and he doesn't understand what's happening. He really grew up with us going to Las Vegas and Orlando for the Olympia. He actually went uh, last year with us as well. So he, he knows what it's like to go to America and to be in such a big uh, audience and actually see myself compete on stage. but. He has grown up with it, so he doesn't realize it's something special. It's just n normal for him. So, uh, but when he's a bit older, we're going to start bringing our children with us again. Because for now, you know, they're too young to understand it anyway, and the big, the long flights aren't really, you know, the most relaxing thing on the prep. But when they're a few years older, I'm going to take them, and then they will truly understand what it means, uh, you know, to be part of this uh, great journey. Let's talk about training a little. We have a young audience here. Most of them are young as far as I can see. So what would you say concerning your career? What uh, were the biggest mistakes you made in the beginning? And what's your training philosophy now? 
Yeah, so in the beginning, I really trained mostly on instinct, so I did not have a set training plan. I just went into the gym, and of course, the first one and a half years, I didn't train legs, <laughs> which was a big mistake, but you know, when you're young, you don't have the aspiration to become a bodybuilder anyway, you just train for fun. And after a while, you notice, wait a second, uh, the upper body is growing, and I thought my legs were big, but they're not big at all in comparison to the upper body. So obviously not training every muscle group was a mistake I made. And then after that, I did a lot of high volume training, everything to failure, drop sets, supersets, you know, the Arnold uh, workouts, like chest and back supersets. I did everything I could, because when you're like 17, 18, you're in indestructible. So no matter what you do, you can always recover from it, but it's not the best for growth ultimately. Um, because when I started training with the progressive overload method, like logging the lifts, making sure that you get stronger week by week, or at least improve upon the previous lifts, that's when I truly made the most gains, especially in the legs. Because when I trained by instinct, the upper body grew quite well, because you know that was the problem. But if you then see some muscle groups in your body that are not growing as quick, you gotta change something up. And for me, the legs have been a weak point for many years. So once I uh, implemented that progressive overload way of training, so every week you try to go one rep more or just five kilos more, and eventually, if you get stronger, your muscles have to grow as well. So that's what happened, you know, since 2019, and now finally it's starting to show the true effect of it by, uh, yeah, by winning the incredible Arnold. And same thing about nutrition. What did you do in the beginning? What would you do different now? Or what do you do different now? Yeah, in the beginning, I ate like what I liked. So like a uh, grilled cheese sandwich, tomato soup with white bread, <laughs> and you can hear no protein. So, uh, but then my dad taught me, okay, after workout, you gotta get some protein in. So then I started to eat like a quark, AKA high protein yogurt, basically. But that's the only protein addition that I made, but I still made gains. But once you start being interested in doing competitions and you start being coached, then you realize, wait a second, you gotta eat healthy and high protein, high carb from the morning to the evening, especially around the workout. So my nutrition really changed a lot when I turned 19, 20, when I started to become serious. And then YouTube and social media started to pick up as well, showing what the bodybuilders actually ate. And that's the only time I realized, wait a second, uh, they actually eat a lot more chicken and fish than I eat right now. So that's when I started to increase uh, the amount I eat. And uh, you know, right now it is very balanced in between every meal has enough vegetables and fruits for the minerals and vitamins and the fiber. Uh, quite a lot of protein as well, high carb, especially around the workout, and I keep the fats quite low, because I believe that fats, they are essential, but you don't need a lot of them, but you do need a lot of carbs to fuel the workout and fuel recovery, and protein, you know, who doesn't like protein? And it's always, of course, the most essential macronutrient uh, for a bodybuilder to grow muscle. So yeah, that's what my uh, diet looks like today. And I do think that's a big reason why I still feel so healthy and why whenever I do blood work, for example, everything looks good as well. The diet plays such a crucial role in that for sure. So what's your take on bulking and um, dieting? Because I think most people, they tend to overeat when bulking and tend to undereat when they start a diet, like going from 8,000 calories to 2,000. Yeah, that's true. You gotta, in bodybuilding, like they always say, it's a cliche, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And the same goes with nutrition. If you go up too quickly in your calories, you know, your body weight will go up, but not your muscle weight, but your fat weight will go up because your body is gonna store the extra calories. So what I like to do is simply look at my weight each week, take pictures and make sure, okay, the weight increases like about half a percent only of body weight, because then you know, okay, if it's only half percent, most of it is not going to be fat because it's going to be muscle as long as you see it in the pictures and in your strength in the gym as well. For example, if you stay, if you don't become stronger in the gym, yet your body weight goes up, well, it's pretty easy to see what's going up then. It's mostly the fat. So, that's an important point. Yeah, I like yes, that. Yes. And um, so that's what I look at for myself as well. That's why the more experience I get in bodybuilding, the more meticulous you gotta be with logging everything. Like you gotta know, okay, I did the bench press 10 times, 150 kilos. 
uh, uh, previous week. But if you see for the uh, last five weeks, it's been the same rep range and the same weight, but your weight has increased. You got to look at your recovery or the amount of calories you eat or change up the macronutrients a little bit. So, you know, uh, taking pictures and logging things and looking at yourself, okay, do I want to eat this because it's delicious or am I eating this because it's serving a purpose of building muscle? And uh, when you're at this level, that's truly what you got to look at. And what are your favorite uh, supplements or which supplements would you recommend, especially like when you're on a, maybe on a low budget? Yeah, so on a low budget, actually I like, of course, designer way for the way drip. Why on a low budget? Because um, if you look at per 100 grams of protein, a designer whey or whey protein in general is cheaper than any protein you can buy in a supermarket. And of course, when you're a beginner as well, uh, it's sometimes hard to take in enough protein, especially when you go to school or you go to work and you're not able to always eat those Tupperware containers with chicken or fish or beef, for example. Sometimes you take sandwiches with you, but then you can have a shake as well to still meet your protein requirements. And I also think like some essential uh, nutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins like vitamin D3 and K2. Vitamin D is simply something that a lot of people, especially in Europe, don't get enough of, especially Netherlands, Germany, the UK. We don't get a lot of sun throughout the year. You, you look so, like you get enough sun. <laughs> yeah, I got to keep up the golden color, of course. I mean, it gave me good luck for the competition and I'm going to keep this up for the uh, Olympia. And I got to show up like this for sure. Um, but in terms of other supplements, of course, creatine, one of the cheapest supplements out there, but at the same time, one of the most proven to work supplements as well. You literally gain quality weight when you take it. Water inside the muscle, providing strength, explosiveness, fullness inside the muscle cell. Yes, it's water weight, but not outside. So it's quality weight, part of the muscle, essentially. And um, yeah, I mean, for a beginner, you really don't need a lot. I mean, those few essentials would be enough. If your body is a bit more, maybe something like omega-3 to truly ensure you get those essential fatty acids in every single day as part of your uh, diet regimen. Um, yeah, but other than that, I mean, stuff like pre-workouts or intra-workouts, those are all luxury items that don't add as much essential value to the progress as like a protein source or essential vitamins and minerals, in my opinion. So now again, back to the upcoming Mr. Olympia, leading to, to the next Mr. Olympia. What are you going to change or would you say you just keep doing what you are doing now and what, what uh, made, the, made it possible to win the Arnold Classic? Yeah, so the most boring answer I always give why I look different at the Arnold Classic is I simply kept going for longer. And a lot of athletes, they are afraid to lose muscle mass when they keep doing the cardio, eating no carbs, and keep training hard. But this goes back to the logging part. If, you, if your strength stays as high as the beginning of the prep, you know objectively you're not losing muscle. So mentally you know, okay, nothing's wrong. Yes, I feel hungry. Yes, I don't feel energized. But in the gym, if you consider perform, your muscle is still there to uphold that tissue. And the only thing I'm gonna do for the Olympia is we're gonna see, okay, so many weeks out, I gotta be at a certain weight so that I will be on time with losing weight before the Olympia and I wanna be at the same weight as for the Arnold but then two weeks earlier again. Just like what I did for the Arnold Classic competitions. So I always see in my physique, okay, if I see those details, then I know I'm on track. But now I saw them in my glutes, which I've never seen before. So now that's gonna be the next landmark and then I'm gonna go beyond that as well. While keeping, of course, um, no, I worked on the weak points, the legs, I'm going to keep, keep working on those. So the legs will be improved, the glutes will be improved, the hamstrings will be improved, but then with an even better conditioning uh, as the Olympia, I, I mean, as the Arnold Classic. And um, yeah, the presentation will also be a lot better. So it really is going to be an exciting show. So, so what exactly do you need to do to beat Chris Bumstead? Well, what I need to do to beat Chris Bumstead is show my strengths because I have strengths, he has strengths, and we both have weaknesses as well. So I have to overpower his weaknesses with my strengths, and my weaknesses have to look less weak against his strengths. <laughs> so basically, uh, I work on the legs. I th think from the front, I can really battle with him already. And from the side, like from the side chest, 
is going to be a deeper hamstring drop, uh, bigger glutes basically, also from the back. The glutes are a big thing, even though it sounds strange and classic physique to work on the glutes. But nowadays they are shown, they're part of the physique, they need to show development. So the more conditioned I get, the bigger the muscles look, but they will also literally be bigger because I have been working on them and keep working on them until the prep starts. So what I need to do to beat them is simply, you know, excel in my strengths even more and in certain poses be undeniable and yeah, basically improve my presentation by so much, be super confident that I simply know I'm here to win this competition. That's what I'm going to do. Did, did you talk to Chris or did he talk to you after winning the Arnold's? Yes, he said actually after the pre-judging at the Arnold Classic Ohio, he came to me backstage and he said, whatever you did, keep doing this because you looked incredible on stage. And, but, but then we didn't know I was going to win even. Um, and I also spoke to him um, a few days later. Uh, we actually had dinner with a, you know, a big amount of athletes and people. And it was nice uh, talking to him just outside of bodybuilding also, just to get to know him as a person. He's a very nice guy as well. So of course I wish him all the best. Also, we talked to him a little bit about his upcoming uh, daughter being born, which is going to be an exciting time, of course, and, and maybe also a difficult time during prep, but uh, <laughs> I, I know it because I have two children myself. Um, yeah, but um, we haven't really, the only thing we also talked regarding bodybuilding is I told him, well, I, I was going to plan on doing some multiple shows and before the Olympia. And he told me as a friend, I'm telling you not to do them, but as a competitor, please do all the shows you can, because then you show up less good at the Olympia, of course, but uh, he's just a nice guy overall, in my opinion. But we did have a very nice Olympia battle, of course, uh, me, Urs, Ramon, and, and Chris uh, in Arizona, which was great, but um, yeah, just very exciting to battle against him at the Olympia. What was going through your head when you were in Columbus and stage with Ramon and you heard your name, you were winning, and then Arnold came on stage, he talked to you, he did the interview, what was going through your head? Yeah, I mean, it's just a, such a big feeling of disbelief when you're standing there because honestly, I was like, okay, I will, at the pre-judging, I knew I could be at least second because I was standing next to Ramon, but at the finals, you're standing there next to him, you're looking at Bob, the announcer, and you're like, uh, of course, you know, they're, gonna, they're not gonna say my name as number one. But then when they did, I mean, the audience was explo exploding, and I was literally there, whoa, I actually won my dream competition, and now I'm actually, what I've always been talking about for many years, will be awarded the prize by Arnold Schwarzenegger himself, so from that moment, I was starstruck. I was like, well, I'm, whatever's gonna happen now, it doesn't matter, I, this is the ultimate dream already. And then Arnold came on stage, he gave me the award, he actually gave me some compliments. I mean, that was, honestly, that was the greatest bodybuilding moment in my life so far, I can say that. So it's just been incredible. And the aftermath also, just so grateful for everything that has happened. And I'm really motivated to show no, my true best that I can be at the Olympia now because the potential is there, it's there. The physique has been shown to be liked by the judges, by the audience. Um, yeah, that's what classic bodybuilding is about for me. That's really what I want to show at the Olympia as well. So, but that moment, it was just incredible. How long does it take that, or did you really realize directly after the Arnold's what happened and what this probably will mean or what this will change? No, I didn't realize it. Uh, it. It took me many days to really let it sink in because you gotta realize the moment that you win such a big contest, you're basically, you're in the Netherlands we call it being lived. So you're not living yourself, you're like other people are trying to get your attention and like uh, media outlets want your interviews, they want your statements, they want pictures, they want photo shoots. You're like, you're not even allowed to let it sink in because you're so busy all the time. And then also two weeks later, I was still doing the Arnold Classic UK. So I had to prep at the same time as well. Then the battle for the Olympia happened in between. So I didn't realize what happened pretty much until like the day before the Arnold Classic UK, we had the athletes meeting as well. So meet the athletes and um, the people who came up to me, the, the line, the queue that was lined up was so long. That's when I realized, hey, this is different from what I'm used to. Things have changed now. And that's when I truly realized. And that's when I was super motivated to once again show my best shape at the on Classic UK stage. And, uh, and that's what I did. So yeah, it's just been um, 
Now, it's, it's not been so long that I truly realized what happened. It's, uh, it's been an amazing experience. Two more questions. Question number one, what are you doing for the rest of uh, FIBO? How can the fans meet you? What, what are your plans? I think you will be at the Jumeidi yes. booth as well. Tomorrow in the yeah, late morning, early afternoon, I'll be at the Gym 80 booth as well. And um, with their incredible gym equipment, which, uh, you know, for the Olympia, I of course want to be able to train with the best possible things out there, especially to improve my weak points, like the legs. So I need the ultra full range of motion to be able to train my muscles as I'm quite tall. A lot of machines out there, they simply don't fit the bill. Also in our own gym, I hand select every single piece of equipment. So yes, we have our own gym. So that really is a big luxury nowadays. I can train when there's no one around, but you need the best possible equipment that, that's out there because this is my only chance for the Olympia. So I want, to be able to train in the best possible environment, and Gym 80 is going to help with that because they have literally infinite range of motion machines, which I tested them out and was like, you, you, there's no stop to this. So that's what, I, that's what I love. So that's what I need to grow those weak points as well. So I'll be there. And uh, you know, I used to be a visitor here and walking around the FIBO. And unfortunately slash fortunately, I can't really walk around anymore because last year I was here as a visitor and then every five meters, you know, I took a picture with somebody. And I think right now it's also going to be very hard <laughs> to walk around, but I will, be, I will be still in the city. I'll be here tomorrow and maybe also uh, at the ESN, uh, in the ESN hall as well. You, you will have an um, appointment at the photo booth as well, the yeah, ESN? Yeah, I, I, I was there. Uh, I, I this think morning. the people can check the times uh, where they can find you, probably yeah, on yes. your Instagram account but or the yeah, Instagram On my stories, account. I'll make sure to put we everything really there. One where more question. Be. Are you going to take a shirt off for you and for, for us and for the audience? Well, möchte das jemand sehen? Ein Wesley Wizards ein paar Wochen. Guys, should I do it or what? Nach der Arnold Classic mit ein bisschen Musik. All right. Mit ein paar schönen, feinen ESN-Goodies und Geschenken. Arnold Classic Champion, Leute, ein bisschen mehr Action brauchen wir da schon. Wir müssen das einfach für Hand führen.